hi guys welcome to today's reading so today we're going to be talking about your year in 2023 going into as much detail as we can so you guys will get a good look at some of the things that you can look forward to and be excited about in the year of 2023 um as well as some of the challenges that you may face so that you can have a heads up and um i guess have an opportunity to brainstorm ahead of time what things may be helpful um and just to allow you the chance to work through some of these challenges in 2023 um, with more grace. So to do today's pile, we have some runes um, in a baggie that you can hear off camera um, that we'll be picking from. So let's see what rune pile one has. Okay. Okay, pile one. This is the rune for you guys. Okay. And pile two. Pile two's room. You can see that. And pile three's room. And for the fourth rune, for pile four, pile five. And lastly, pile six. Okay. And pile six, this is your rune. So take as much time as you guys need to pick which rune you feel connected to. And when you do feel ready, um, you can look for your pile in the description below. Um, I hope that you guys find this reading helpful and get you excited about um, the rest of 2023. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for you guys to see today's reading and I will see you in your pile. Hi, pile one. Welcome to your reading today. So we're going to be talking about the year 2023, talking about a little bit of um, we pick some relationship cards. So for those of you guys who want to take a look at relationships for 2023 we do um talk about that a little bit in this reading um but we have some tarot cards some oracle cards and we're just gonna see what message we get kind of leaving it open so that what is most important for you guys to hear today will get to be talked about um and if you feel like you relate to this message at all and want to share with the group um or if you know um resources or tips and tricks that have helped you in whatever challenges we may talk about today um please feel free to leave it in the comment section um it may help someone who comes across that message and um kind of help each other out in a, in a sense or at least that's one of the things that um i hope we get a chance to do in this setting. So without <laughs> talking your ear off, um, we can just get into today's reading. Um, so let's start off with the tarot cards and then we can go from there. So let's see, I'm going to put the tarot cards up there um, or the rest of the Oracle cards up there. So we have two cards. We have the strength card and the devil card. And so for this um, deck, I believe it is the witch is um, the modern witch, modern witch tarot. I think that's what it's called. Um, but they have a book with these cards. And sometimes I like to read the message out of there. So I actually want to read the message for you guys for the strength card with the devil card being the underlying energy. So let's see. So the strength card says difficult problems require strength and willpower. Strength can tame a lion, face down her fears and unwanted feelings, bringing them under control through grace and acceptance. Only by reconciling with those scary aspects of ourselves can strength grow and discover a true inner calm. Flowers create a link between strength and the lion, and this connection can't be severed. 
These inner passions, these emotions that feel like they're spiraling out of control and consuming us need to be accepted peacefully or they'll end up controlling us. It will take courage to approach these possibly frightening frightening aspects of ourselves. I'll read that again. It will take courage to approach these possibly frightening aspects of ourselves. It will also take compassion and tenderness as only then can you find the inner strength and power to make yourself whole. You have to accept your fears, your anxieties, and your feelings because they are a part of you. You can't cut them off. You may find yourself dealing with a difficult problem, but it can be dealt with through grace, maturity, and strength. So I really like that um, reading. Um, There's a book that it reminds me of. So I'll talk about the message first that I kind of feel like this is I'm talking about with these two cards and then I'll go grab what it is I'm thinking um, you guys may find helpful. So the strength card for this reading kind of gives me the energy of um, or reminds me of like having difficulty with experiencing unpleasant emotions that's what it reminds me of so maybe um you know for some this could be dealing with a mental health challenge or a mental health diagnosis for others this could just be having it be very challenging to experience a full spectrum of emotions so um maybe it's really hard to um experience uh sadness or grief um maybe when you experience those things you kind of feel like you get lost in them and um, the experience that you have has has made it very scary to imagine re-experiencing that. So, for example, maybe when you were younger, you lost a family member and went through a really bad time with grief. And so, you know, as an adult, maybe the emotion of grief, you know, brings up a lot of fear for you. And maybe you kind of like dread having to re-experience that emotion or that experience of losing someone else close to you. Um, This could be, you know, maybe if you have a mental health diagnosis and you had a depressive episode in your teenage years and you're an adult now and it's, you know, been a few years of being stable, um, but there's still just like this, this fear of what, what if I have another depressive episode, you know, maybe there's a day that is really rough for you and you find yourself feeling sad and, you know, instead of being able to experience it as a singular moment, it kind of snaps you back to that time that you had a depressive episode. And so it's just kind of really challenging for this group to get through those unpleasant emotions for one reason or another. And so this strength card is really talking about um, developing uh, habits, developing um, behavior changes, developing um tactics or skills that's the word I'm looking for developing developing skills that really allow you to um, get to a space where you feel more more capable of managing the full spectrum of emotions Um, and so this devil card here is kind of talking about um, you know when we have this challenge of dealing with unpleasant emotions Sometimes we start to find things to lean into to um, to alleviate some of that pressure. So, you know, for me, I am a foodie when it comes to dealing with emotions, like um, even with a lot of the skills that I've learned about, you know, um, building that window of tolerance for my anxiety or managing depressive um, symptoms, like sometimes you, I still find myself like overeating because I'm feeling anxious or overeating because I'm feeling sad. Um, so, you know, the devil card is just kind of talking about like, what are, what are some of those things for you that you feel like you lean into as a way to ease some of these emotions and for some, this may be, you know, in 2023, kind of getting a chance to either take a first look at these things, or maybe you already know these things and kind of taking a first look at how can I um, start to ease up on some of these behaviors if you feel like they have um, limited um, sort of like the lifestyle that you'd like or limited um, a way in which you'd like to be living um, Hopefully that that phrasing makes sense. Um, But in some way or another, like um, the devil card usually talks about feeling chained um, in some way or um, self-limited because um, 
because of some, some behavior or, um, action that we partake in. Um, so I guess on the flip side of mentioning that as well is, um, knowing that, um, you know, in 2023, there is also like that possibility of a success in, in one way or another. This isn't to say like, Hey, you know, one day I realize and the next day it's no longer an issue. I think, um, being able to recognize that there is inherent challenge in a lot of these things that we have to do, that it can be really hard to get through this. But (laughs) I want to say like just some personal experience, even when it is really difficult, um, it may be hard as hell, but hard as hell doesn't equal impossible. And I, I hope that that feels more validating than, um, invalidating. I hope, you know, in saying that, um, it, it does feel helpful in the sense of like, damn, like this may be really effing hard, but like if I can, um, find a way to, to make changes that feel right for you, that, um, are done in ways that feel good for you. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things that I, I recognize is probably not easy. Um, I love sharing like (laughs) personal stories with you guys because I like I guess like partly hope that um it'll be helpful to kind of like talk to someone in a sense like who has dealt with similar um maybe not exactly the same but like something similar I remember I had um just come home um because I was doing a residential program for my mental health diagnoses um seeking treatment and I came home and Um, like one of my symptoms for my depression was like fatigue. Uh, but it was to the point where it was like, I couldn't, like, I couldn't physically move. Like my, I was so fatigued that like my body was exhausted. Like my mind was exhausted. My body was exhausted. And I remember the first time I attempted working out when I got home from treatment, um, because that was one of the things I like really wanted to try knowing that it could help, um, help my mood in some way. So I like picked the home workout and, um, I had like a little like TV that was set up in my room and I put out a mat. I don't even think actually, I didn't even put on a mat. I was just like body on carpet. Like <laughs> this is my mat. We're just going to make it work. And I remember at the end of that first workout, like I broke down in tears. I was just so like proud of myself that I even tried like that I even was able to get through a 25 minute workout. And I remember being so proud of myself, but also so damn exhausted that I literally fell asleep on the carpet. I could like, I tried to move just a few feet. It would have taken me to get to my bed all sweaty to sleep there. And I was like, I can't even effing move right now. Like, I don't care. I'm proud of myself. I'm going to cry and fall asleep here. Tears of joy. And I woke up hours later and was just like, I did it. I'm proud of myself. I just worked out. And that's kind of the energy I like feel for you guys in 2023. Like, you know, recognizing that, hey, this may be something that I'm, you know, trying to cope with. And maybe I'm deciding that this is no longer a way I want to cope or um, finding new skills that can help to better your life in one way or another. And you know, practicing them for the first few times and maybe it's really effing hard, but like you guys try anyway. And, you know, kudos because in the trying, like it's hard as hell. Like it's not as simple as being like, Hey, I'm just gonna, Oh, you need to do, you need to push yourself or you need to no. Like we we don't do all of that over here. (laughs) Right. Like this shit is hard. And there is a mental challenge in even getting to a point of physically doing something. So even if, you know, the stage that you're at is just mental in the sense of like mentally readying yourself to do something physical, please know that you are still doing the work that in mentally preparing, you are making progress and you are doing the work to un- undo the change that are that are there, that are, you know, there as a protection in a sense, because in trying not to experience unpleasant emotions, your mind has tried to protect you from something that's unpleasant. But in turn, oftentimes we usually may find that 
we don't only block out the unpleasant emotions. It may also be very difficult to experience some of the pleasant emotions like joy and excitement and relief and um, happiness and you know all of those pleasant emotions we may not have access to in the same way um, because of some some of the numbness that kind of settles in um, when we're trying to cope with the, the the unpleasant emotions. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, this is what 2023 is largely, largely about for you guys, recognizing and undoing some of, um, some of the chains, um, in regards to that. So we have here gratitude, abundance, and Gisellig. So I think the um, Gisellig card here, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is it Gisellig or Gisellig? If you know, please let me know in the comment section, please. Um, but that card, usually um, a rough translation, I think it's like an, a Dutch word, but I think a rough translation is usually um, Comey. Oh my God, not Comey but cozy, homey, <laughs> or um, friendly. So I think for some of you guys in this group, being able to participate in activities or create habits that give that, that sense of something. So for some, this may mean needing to develop a friend group as a support, like a physical support. That way it's a little bit harder to break some of these addictions. Um, or addictive habits or um, coping strategies um, or um, or just like a, a general sense of like um, numbness like what, whatever wherever you kind of like fall on that spectrum of like what has been going on but um, yeah like a friend support uh, friends for support or even like a support group like you know, Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous or um, Nicotine Anonymous, like like those sorts of support groups or like grief support groups. Um, this could be um, like mommy support groups, like say if you're a new mom, even if you don't consider yourself a new mom, but maybe it would be very helpful to like have friends who kind of understand what mom or parent life is like if they have like dad support groups if you're like a single father or even like a father within um within a family unit like you have a partner that you partner with but you'd still like to make friends who um who get the get the struggle of being a parent or the joys of being a parent and you just want to share the joys um, or my non-binary people who fall into that same category of parenting and wanting to um, wanting to have a support group. Um, that that is what this card kind of reminds me of. But also like the cozy and like warm factor of maybe for some of you guys, it's really helpful to like burn candles or burn incense, or you really like essential oils or. Um, maybe you like foot baths or hot baths or hot showers. Like maybe you like to go to a cafe that you enjoy, or you like going to like bookstores, like whatever that thing is for you that feels warm and cozy, or just kind of gives you that vibe. Even if you just like Google this word, like I'm sure maybe examples of activities will come up that you may find helpful in 2023. Um, but also too, um, maybe for some of you guys, Gratitude journaling is something that you'd like. This won't be for everyone, um, especially because activities are like very unique to each person and what they find helpful. But I did want to mention it just in case. Um, but anything that you feel like um, one thing this makes me think of is um, the question of like, who are you grateful for in your life? And, um, do you feel like you can lean on them? And if so, maybe 2023 is a year in which you lean on this person a little bit more in the sense of you're, um, more open to support from this person. So like maybe you're really close with, um, 
a parent and you don't really give them the opportunity to be as supportive as they'd like to be. Um, maybe this year you're able to like better word um, ways in which they could be of a support, maybe because this year you learn a little bit more about yourself and, and what is helpful for you support wise, what you kind of, um, what you find helpful as support, you know, since that's unique to everyone. Um, that's what this gratitude card kind of reminds me of. Um, and the abundance card, um, the abundance card kind of brings up for me, uh, relationship stuff in a sense of like more fulfilling relationships. I think again, because you get to know yourself a little bit more and, and you can share with more people about, you know, who you are as a person and the things that you enjoy doing with other people and the support that you need from other people. I think that will really make your relationships more fulfilling um, because there will be a greater sense of like care and, and concern from other people, not just in, and what they think would be helpful, but you, but them giving to you what you think would be helpful and that more specific care and concern really, um, really strengthening a bond that already exists in relationships with you. Um, yeah, I think, um, storytelling again, um, <laughs> I think like for myself, like my mom, um, when I was like a teenager, uh, like 15, 14, 15 was around the time I first got diagnosed with um, major depressive disorder. And so I think over the years, um, it was really hard to kind of like explain to people what it was that I needed because I didn't know myself necessarily, or like I was still learning, um, about my condition and how it affected me and the things that I needed and, and just a whole, a whole slew of things. But, um, recently I was just, you know, sad for a day, but again, like, <laughs> um, sort of like this feeling of like what we talked about earlier in your reading. Um, I like called my mom and within like two minutes, she picked up on like my mood and I was just like, oh, I needed that. Like I needed someone to see me without me needing to like necessarily say something and not to say like, that's how it should always be. Like, that's how it needs to be. But I think in that moment, like I wasn't wanting to like burden her, but I wanted to check in on her and she kind of saw me in, in, in those two minutes, like, Oh, Oh, like you mentioned, like you've been sleeping a lot and that kind of like cued her in and like, are you, are you doing okay? Like, and I just kind of needed someone to be like, are you doing okay? Um, <laughs> without, yeah, so that is kind of a feeling I get that, like, you'll get to experience in 2023, like, um, a better understanding from other people about, like, what you need so that you can get those moments of, hey, are you doing good? Or, hey, I noticed, like, your hoodie's been pulled down all class. Like, are you doing okay? Like, you know what I mean? Just people kind of, like, checking in on you because they notice a little bit more. And I think because they know you a little bit more. Um, so that feeling, like... That is what the abundance card is kind of giving. Um, it's giving. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So let's see. We also have some Oracle cards. So the Oracle card here that we have calling the storm. That's what we have here. So we'll read that one from the book. So let me actually get the book really quick. And then there was also a um, like under the deck is this me? So I'll leave this here just for now um, while we read. Okay, so coming to the storm says the stage is bargain. Power comes not from the inside, but from connection and integration to a greater whole. Okay, visual seed. A shaman woman wears an antler hat, dresses in crimson and brown, and holds her crown-headed staff to the storm. Autumn leaves spiral out of control around her as the whirlwind shakes the world. Sentence. Pull and release. Push to the limit. The eye is the only peaceful place that can be. Going dark. The, the message. There is time to find and release your, our power. Like a spring that had been compressed to the point it had lost the memory of motion and movement. Yet there is power inside it. Finding it is called empowerment. It starts from the belief in our power. 
and our ability to cope. See? Oh, your ability to cope, you guys. See, look. So in our ability to cope, to fight, to endure, to overcome a challenge. However, too often we are encouraged to see empowerment as something that happens only within in our psychological space. We are not necessarily islands. We can borrow the power of the world around, the context, the environment, the expectations. We do not control the storm. We just call it. To call the storm, we need not to fear it. And this is what will make us strong. After the storm, there is always sun. So if the sky has been gray for too long of a time, it's time not to fear the storm, but to embrace it. It will grow up and devour our chains and our jailers, and it will hurt us as well. But it will be healthier than just staring at the chilly rain. We can restart only after we let ourselves end. I love this card. So this, um, and so this reminds me of a book that I wanted to share with you guys. Cause I know oftentimes, um, as I've spoken to people, um, when like doing readings for them, they usually, at least the people I talk to find it really helpful when they can actively do something. And that too, that they don't take these messages as, um, like you don't have to take it as a grain of salt, like because someone said it, that's what you need to do. Like you can take this as like, I like this, or um, I think that would be helpful and just, you know, take it pieces by piece as you need. Um, but what I really like about this card is that it discusses the concept really of um, one, it's not just like a, a inner thing, like there may be something external that you can do that can be of help. Um, but also that we don't control our emotions. Um, they really do ebb and flow. And so while we may be experiencing an unpleasant emotion, um, it's not forever, although it may be for a long time, um, but that emotions do come and then they do go and trying to learn how to um, gracefully experience the unpleasant emotions is is a skill, right? Like that's something that we learn. And if we feel like we haven't learned that um, as, you know, kids or teenagers or adults yet, um, there's an opportunity here to learn that in 2023 um, and and learning that sometimes those waves of emotions can feel like they've really been a tsunami and they've swept up everything in this path and destroyed everything in this path. But yet still um, we can find find ways to um regrow to build new foundations that are even stronger than before because in that experience we learned something about ourselves we learned something about managing our emotions and and what helps us to cope um but I really like you know that it says like we have an we have an, an ability to cope to fight to endure to overcome a challenge so that is you guys you know there is there is inherent ability for you guys and and being able to do this um so yeah and then the underlying card here just being is this me and so maybe that's a question that you guys are asking yourself in 2023 like is what I'm doing still feeling like me for this year like is this still feeling like um it's helpful is this still feeling like it's healing for me um, and if not, kind of like evaluating whatever that is. Okay, so let's um, look at the rest of these cards. Okay. So we have a chakra card here. Um, flexibility. So I think for you guys, a lot of um, figuring out like what works and being willing to um, rough learn this, right? So it's not like you try one thing and then you magically have like mastered, um, your coping skills. Like this is really developing a toolkit of things, like trying things and being like, this does work, this doesn't work, or this may work if I adjust it a little bit to me. So it works for me as an individual, really just trying to, um, yeah, really just trying to make it unique to you. 
that's what I feel like this flexibility card is really talking about. But um, there is a book. So we will pull out the book and and read that. That way, if you feel like there's a more specific message for you, you can um, glean whatever that message is. So um, flexibility is for the sacral chakra. The affirmation is I am free flowing and flexible. Besides you, you have called upon this card today to encourage you to invite more flexibility into your world. The nature of life and our experiences are constantly inviting us to find a state of flexibility. When you can surrender to these messages, they will allow and embody a more flexible state of being. This will bring an abundance of ease and grace as you find yourself in the flow. This definitely reminds me of like the flow again of like emotions like letting you know when when a heavy big like when a big wave of emotion is coming through learning how to you know kind of like float float alongside the emotion and experiencing it as you're kind of like floating through it so it says have you been feeling a little rigid in your thoughts or ideas lately maybe even a little stuck in your ways if so it's time to practice the art of flexibility you may be holding on to something in your life a little too tightly and now it is time to let go and allow some new energy to flow in. It is easy to get caught up in trivial ideas and thoughts, especially if you have strong belief systems in place in your life. However, at this time, it will be beneficial and very healing to look at some of those outdated ways and beliefs that could be wreaking havoc in your world. So this may just be looking at some um, some of your thoughts, some of your mindsets, some of your belief systems and just reevaluating this year like which ones still feel like a good fit, which ones don't feel like a good fit, or which ones could do with a little sprucing up in 2023, um, to maybe taking a look at um, some of your values, um, reevaluating some of those things. I'll bring um, two books just to kind of show you guys on, on camera after I finish this that may help with some of the stuff that we've talked about, if you're a book reader or just someone who likes to do um, specific activities to work on some of this stuff. Um, it says, take some time to tune in and see what no longer, oh, wow. See, look at that. Take some time to tune in and see what no longer serves you and take the time to bring about a little more flexibility. Um, Let's see. This card could also mean that you are being too rigid with a particular person and it is time to give them and yourself a little slack. Flexibility is available to you right now. Let it in and allow for a life with a little more ease and grace. Awesome. I love that for you guys. Okay. And now we also have Talisman of Potency, Charging Sacred Objects of Power. Hopefully you can still see that. And then we have your relationship cards here. So we have the Divine Feminine. Uh, oh, let me leave this the way it was. Um, to be fair. And then um, chaos and conflict. So um, let's do the relationship reading. And then I think we'll close out with this last Oracle card. Okay, so for these um, Oracle cards here, it's really talking about an experience where um, for either some of you guys or for all of you guys, whoever you feel like this relates to you, um, may experience within like your society where it's not as accepted to experience um, emotions or like to be emotional. And so you may be finding that in 2023, um, you're kind of like standing up for yourself and or others in regards to this. So maybe instead of, you know, letting people kind of dissuade you from being emotional and experiencing the full spectrum of emotions because of X, Y, and Z, whatever reason, they may be giving you like, oh, you're a man, you should suck it up or, oh, um, keep pushing or it's not that bad, or don't be so sensitive, like whatever BS reason people give you, like, this is you in 2023, kind of like pushing back and being like, F that, like, if I want to F and cry, I want to F and cry, like, if I want to laugh my ass off, because I find this funny, I'm gonna laugh, like, 
don't be surprised um, because there are definitely, you know, people who experience that. Like I remember growing up and my grandmother used to literally say to my mom whenever my mom would just laugh, what are you laughing about? Like she had a problem with my mom being happy. Like, so there are people out there who live in home situations or have friends or who have family members or coworkers, whoever it may be, who are fucking buzz killers. Okay. So for whoever the buzz kill is in your life, you are saying, fuck that. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to cry. Whatever it is that you're needing to do emotionally, like you're doing it in 2023. And so these cards are talking about like talking about that, that to be fair cards, like it's only fair. It's only fair that I get to be a human and experience my emotions as humans do. It's only fair. And the chaos and conflict card is talking about the the conflict, the conflict between what people are telling you is acceptable and what you yourself know intrinsically is needing to be experienced and expressed and expressing and experiencing it in 2023. And I'm proud of you guys for it because that is not easy. It's not easy to um, blaze a path when other people are literally looking down at you for doing it. It's not easy to be that emotional, intuitive person, empathic person, like you have empathy for other people, person when society is saying ill, right? Like it's not easy. So I can't snap with this hand. So we just going to do this. <laughs> Kudos to y'all for that, okay? So we have the last card here. Last card here. Talismans of potency, charging sacred objects of power. Let's read that card and we can wrap you guys up today. But you know I enjoyed our time together. All right, so let's see. The book should be in here, but it's not in here. Give me a second, guys. I'm going to grab the book for... I'm going to grab the book for this card and also the two books that I mentioned that you guys may like. Okay, guys, so I have the book, but before we do your last Oracle card, let me show you the books I wanted to mention. So um, because you guys are really strongly themed um, for learning like new habits and skills and stuff to deal with um, a broad range of emotions. The book I thought of, or one of the books was, um, if you can see this, Activating Happiness. And this is by Rachel Hershenberg, uh, PhD. Um, I really like this book because it goes through a lot of like different specific skills that you can use. So this is very like a practical book. Like it'll talk about... Um, like sleep changes. Let's see here if I can just like read the back. Maybe that'll be help more helpful. Um, if you have depression, lack motivation, or just feel down in the dumps, you know that something in your life needs to change. And while change can seem hard or overwhelming, there are simple actions you can take every day to improve your mood and jumpstart your joy. Whether it's going for a walk instead of watching TV or simply talking with a friend, over time, these seemingly small activities will actually change your brain and shape the way you live and see the world. So again, like it's really simple stuff. Like it's not, um, let me see if I can find like a small example. Like for example, it may address like, are you a morning bird or a night owl? And kind of like adjusting your sleep schedule to what that is. That way, um, you can improve your mood by, um, sleeping alongside your natural circadian rhythm, something as small as that will, can make a huge difference. Um, and then another book I thought of is the happiness trap, um, by Russ Harris. Um, this book really great, um, about addressing, I feel like, um, again, getting to better understand like our emotions and learning to, um, experience the unpleasant emotions, I think, and kind of getting out of a habit of trying to avoid the unpleasant emotions, which can oftentimes get us in a bit of trouble. Um, so yeah, if you feel like, um, either of those books would be helpful or you've already read those books, like 
feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'd love to hear like what are some of the tips you've been using from those books that you found uh, helpful. All right, so I am just pulling up this card, QR. Yo, I always have to like do the alphabet. You guys do QR, S, T. All right, here we go. <laughs> Okay, all right. Almost. I'm so sorry, guys. I should have just forwarded this part of the video for you. But I'm like, it's just the last card. Okay. So, talisman of potency. Charging sacred objects of power. Sacred tools and objects can become an extension of your energy field, focusing your power and intention, helping you heal the split between spirit and matter and learning to bring physical matter more deeply into light and life. You are encouraged to work with sacred materials in a conscious way to help your own healing and enjoyment of the material world as a part of your spiritual practice. Your love for the physical world of matter is a gift to the earth too. All right. So since this is like a big four year year 2023, we're going to be extra and read the whole message because it's for the year of 2023. This may come into play at any time. Um, and so I want you guys to be able to pick from whatever you feel like may relate to you within this year. So if you need a pause before the long read, it's okay. But here we go. You are guided to cleanse and charge sacred objects to empower your energy field and accomplish your spiritual mission now. These objects might be a wand, a chalice or sword, a bowl, or even a special tile with an image that you love, a statue, cloth with a beautiful design, a natural crystal or a black mirror or a rock, shell or feather, you found waiting for you whilst out in nature one day. If finding a gift in nature, it is wise to ask the spirit of the earth if the item in question is intended for your healing work, or if you feel it is, then of course receive it with gratitude. If not, bless it and move on. This oracle is seeking to draw your awareness to your special ability to work with material objects to awaken spiritual light within them. The material world is filled with light and our loving attention can help awaken that light within form. In the same way that someone seeing the best in you, knowing what you are truly capable of, can help you reach your dreams and become that self more fully, so too can holding an awareness that just like our bodies, the material world holds its own light and benefits from love, attention, and care. This is the loving art of integrating spirit into matter and it is part of of your spiritual potency and healing gift to be able to love the physical world as an element of your spiritual journey. Objects become talismans when they are cleansed, dedicated, and charged with sacred intent. This is consecration or the rendering of something into sacredness. Talismans are a way to enjoy a spiritual relationship with the material world. It is not a matter of not being able to work without them, but more of enjoyment and beauty of working with the material world in a spiritual way. This is also a way to heal any difficult relationship that you may have had with your mother, your body, eating new food, or with financial or physical security. It can also include difficulties in bringing your ideas into physical form, living your path in a practical and material way, and any other issues that stem from a wounded relationship to matter somehow seeing it as less than spirit. What wonderful and varied healing effects talismans can bring to us. It all starts with the honoring of light and matter, the sacredness of the material world. If you have been considering working with crystals for healing or tarot cards or physical tools for spiritual growth, you are encouraged to do so by the Oracle of Talismans of Potency. They will help you grow and empower you. If you have an object in your space that you have been thinking of cleansing, perhaps a crystal or piece of jewelry, this oracle encourages you to do so using breath, salt, moonlight, or sound as you so choose. Remember that objects in the material world hold vibrations too. Cleansing with love and intention to dissipate negative energy is a way to care for the material world, helping awaken the light within. If you have been considering building sacred jewelry or purchasing a crystal or other healing tool, you are encouraged to do so and learn to work with it. 
The Oracle of Talismans of Potency supports you in honoring your physical world and its beauty in your life in this way. So thank you so much, Pile One, for being here today. I hope that you found this reading to be confirming of whatever it is that you may already be going through and, and what you may be working on through 2023. I hope that you found this reading to be healing in some way, um, that it gave you something physical, tangible, practical to work on throughout 2023. And I look forward to seeing you again in your next reading and happy 2023. <laughs> Bye, Pile 1. <laughs> Hi, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading today. So today we're just going to be giving you guys a message that will talk about the year 2023 for you. Um, I did already pick you guys' cards for this reading. And um, I will say right off the bat, it definitely gives a strong energy of like relationships being um, a large part of what we'll be talking about. So like usually there's like certain areas like personal career, money, relationships, whether that's intrapersonal, like the relationship with yourself or a relationship with others. This feels very much like relationships. Um, talking a little bit about your relationship with yourself, relationship with others. Um, so yeah, so we will start with some tarot cards and then we have some oracle cards. Um, but as always, um, I hope that you find this reading to be confirmation of what you're experiencing and what you may already be thinking about that may be helpful. And, and I hope that you find um, pieces of information within this reading that um, are practical tools, tips, and skills that you can use to move forward, as well as just uh, an opportunity to kind of, um, you know, hear me kind of share personal experiences. If there's anything here that I feel like I personally can relate to that way, you don't necessarily feel like you're alone in your experience. Um, and if you ever feel comfortable to talk about your experience, always feel free to drop that down in the chat. So without talking your ear off, <laughs> we can go ahead and get started. So let's see, we have a few tarot cards to start with. So so we have Eight of Cups, Six of Cups, um, Three of Swords, Nine of Swords, and the Justice card. Okay, you guys, so for this Three of Swords card, right off the bat, we're talking about in the year of 2023, a relationship that is ending. So this does not have to be um, just a like romantic relationship. This could be um, a relationship with a friend or um, deciding to no longer keep in contact with a family member or um, disconnecting from a friendship with a co-worker or this could be a romantic relationship. Whatever the nature of the relationship is, this relationship has ended, whether it was you decided to end it or this relationship ended because of the other person or by some other means. But it's talking about the end of a relationship that you're going to be feeling the hurts about, but this relationship ended and this ending being something that was positive for you. Like it was something that was needed and 2023 is kind of ushering in either this time and where you're recognizing like, Hey, this needs to end. This isn't healthy for me. Or 2023 is ushering in this phase of like, all right, this relationship has just ended either like at the end of 2022 or at the start of 2023. And these are kind of like next steps of um, kind of like working through the um, working through whatever is needing to be addressed that um, made this relationship um, unhealthy in a way um, or just um, just like abusive, like, um, we, we didn't pick, um, yet talk about, um, the other relationship cards, but I do want to mention just like off the rip, like one of the cards that came up when I was shuffling upright was relational abuse. So maybe for some of you guys, this card is like very specific to like, we're talking about an abusive relationship right now. And underneath it says, notice red flags that may be emotional, physical, sexual, financial in nature, ask for help in situation. So you just 
just like off the bat, this is kind of like what we're talking about for you guys' group. So this Eight of Cups is really talking about like in its upright position, the Eight of Cups really leans into pouring your energy, your emotions, your time into something. And so you guys have this card in reverse. So we're really talking about noticing like, hey, this is not healthy. This is not good for me. This is not helping me. I'm not going to be pouring my energy into this anymore. Like whatever it is that you've been pouring your love and emotions into, you're really stepping away from it. You're really recognizing that it's not working out for you. And although it may be really difficult to step away from this thing because you, you know, you've invested a lot of time and energy into this person and, you know, you may be having those thoughts of like, damn, like I've been here for four years. I've been here for two years. I've been here for 10 years, like whatever the amount of time, like you may be having those thoughts, like I've been here for X amount of time. Um, but I think you guys are really getting to a point in 2023 when you're realizing like, I don't really care how long I've been in this relationship because this shit is just toxic. Like it's not helping me. Like it might be ruining other parts of your life. Like maybe work has become really hard or school has become really hard or parenting or, you know, what other obligations you have outside of just like tending to this relationship has become really difficult because of how draining this relationship is. And so although it may be difficult, you're really just getting to this point where you're like, all right, this situation is hopeless. Like I need to step away. I'm going to learn whatever I'm supposed to take from this situation if there's anything that you feel like you need to learn, because that's not to say that everything's a learning experience. If that's how you approach life and that's your mindset, fine. Don't feel like you need to always take something away from a situation. If you do, great. If you don't, that's great too. And moving on. Like this is the kind of energy, like this is like move on energy. And the Six of Cups energy is really just feeding off of this Eight of Cups energy because usually with Six of Cups, we see like nostalgia, um, really like connection in a way. Um, but because it's reversed, it's really just reiterating like you're stepping away from something, you're disconnecting from a person, um, you're really like instead of um, externally showing love and compassion to someone who in this situation, it really just isn't help, healthy for you guys, like really turning that love inward and being like, I'm going to love on me instead. I'm going to use all of that energy that I'm trying to give to this person, hoping that a situation will change and realizing like, okay, maybe this situation isn't going to change. I can't make this person change. I can't make us click. Um, I can't make this work again if it stopped working. And instead, I'm just going to put this energy into myself. Like this is really kind of like what I'm getting from, um, this, this card here and just kind of recognizing like, you know, this may be painful again, like, um, but just kind of learning to, to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not kind, but like compassionate with yourself, not kind of being hard on yourself in, in regards to what you've been experiencing really. Um, I know sometimes like can kind of feel like we end up like blaming ourselves for something like, yes, like for a lot of us being accountable to some degree can be helpful, but also like being compassionate alongside that accountability. Um, cause we're always doing our best, even if we don't feel like it was our best. But again, like when we are having that thought, that's kind of like a, a hindsight, 2020 thought like we can have that thought because we've gone through the experience but we needed to go through that experience to be like damn I could have done something differently or I feel like I could have done something better um so just kind of having that compassion alongside that acknowledgement um of what we've starting to recognize that we're, we've learned or are in the process of learning and, and kind of like cementing that um cementing that as a learned thing and for the nine of cups here we're really just talking about um I want to say part of this message that the nine of swords is giving is like do you have someone you can talk to about this that you really trust like can you talk to a parent can you talk to a friend um who's your support person that you can kind of trust um that can help 
help you to kind of get through this because you may not be able to see um to see the future yet like to be able to see the light <laughs> at the end of the tunnel per se um so you may be needing someone to kind of just be there to see it for you if that makes sense like someone you trust to be that um positive voice of reason I guess to be that kernel of hope that you can't hold for yourself but they can hold it for you and it doesn't kind of um I think sometimes we need someone who we feel like isn't being hopeful and like they don't actually believe in us but they're just kind of saying it but like I think that for some of you guys you may have someone in your life that like you genuinely would believe them if they told you you're gonna get through this and that's what you're needing to hear or whatever it is that they say to you that you need to hear but it it gives you that kernel of hope like who is that person for you um or if you don't have that person do you have a phrase or a saying that you've told yourself and that's been helpful to hear um or just something that's motivational like maybe there's videos that you watch that you find motivational um or music or whatever that thing is like kind of leaning into that a bit with this nine of swords um with this knight of swords energy um and also just recognizing like whatever negative emotions we're not sorry not negative but um unpleasant emotions um come up for you through through this process of you know for some of us needing to deliberate are we going to decide to leave or are we going to decide to stay if we do decide to leave um dealing with the emotions that come up the grief the feelings of loss the feelings of um, trying to get ourselves up again and start over or start, start over by ourselves or, you know, whatever that thing is, um, needing to trust ourselves that it's okay to feel whatever, whatever those emotions are. And so this justice card here, um, I actually want to, there's like a little booklet that comes with this specific deck. And I feel like, um, the message in that booklet would be really helpful for you guys to hear this, like, Okay, so we have the justice card. It says the choices we make shape who we are. Justice, contemplative in her bright red, red light coat, holds high the sword of choice. She does not treat her tasks lightly and the balance scales indicate that she is weighing all the options before her. Justice seeks to uncover deep understanding of moral and ethical truths. And once she's found the right path, she's ready to take action and use that sword. You have to take responsibility for every choice you make. If you drift through life without examining your choices and what they say about you and your values, you will never be truly self-aware and you may find yourself treating others with dishonesty and unfairness. There may be a difficult issue that you need to examine or a social responsibility you've been neglecting. It's time to stand up. It's time to do the right thing. Because I feel like this justice card is definitely talking about like, you know, doing the right thing by you, like your standards and also taking um, some time in 2023 to evaluate your own values, um, like really looking at and saying to yourself, like, um, like specific values, because again, like I, I want you guys to have like uh, practical tools and tips. So um, what I will do is um, actually while we're doing the reading, because I know myself, let me pull up what I'm thinking of and then um, reference it and I'll make sure to leave it in the description box. So give me one second really quick just to find this for you guys.
Okay, so there is um, an activity, like a values activity um, in this uh, book called The Happiness Trap. Um, the f- times that I was introduced to it was when I was going through different groups um, for like mental health diagnoses treatment. Um, and I found this values worksheet to be very helpful. There's a lot of different kinds, um, on the internet. Um, so if you feel like, um, this one can be adjusted a little bit to be a better fit for you, please feel free to Google, um, values based assessments, um, something along those lines, um, to one that you feel is better tailored for you. But, um, I wanted to mention this one. I'll leave the link in the description and it would be on pages 23 and 24 and um, the directions are on here. It'll basically just tell you to like um, assess like which values are very important, quite important, not so important, so and so. Um, there's no right or wrong values here. You're just kind of getting an opportunity to look and see what your, what you value. So for example, the first one is acceptance and it, um, defines acceptance as to be open to and accepting of myself, others, life, etc. And you can rate that very important, quite important, not so important. And this is unique to you. Like one person may rate it as quite important. Someone may say it's not so important. Someone may say it's not important at all. This is personal. It's for you. No one's going to be over your shoulder when you watch this. But I find it very helpful to get a sense of what are your values so that you can take actions that you feel like are aligned with those values. And that really does bring a greater sense of happiness into your life. But also... It makes it a lot easier to cut off things in your life that are misaligned with those values because it makes it quite obvious to you why certain things make you unhappy um, or take away or draw from draw from your pool of happiness or are kind of just like draining in general. So I will leave that in the description so you guys can do with it as you need. And if you find it helpful um, or want to share anything about your experience with doing it in the comment section, please feel free. I would love to hear about it as always. Um, so yeah, so let's continue on with, um, you guys' reading. So we have here strong and I want to say that this card is really talking about, um, reminding you that you are a, you are a strong individual, Like whether you feel like it or not, everyone has strengths and sometimes it's really hard to see what those are, but I feel like in 2023, you're going to get an opportunity to really pinpoint some of those things. I will tell you right now that one of your strengths is introspection. Like you're here (laughs) watching a reading that you feel like resonates with you so that you can do inner work so that you can acknowledge something that, um, is confirmation of a, something that you may be struggling with, or, uh, maybe a challenge. Like that's a strength. Like you are embodying the strength of you're embodying your strength. Like that's a strength of yours. Um, I think also if it's helpful for you guys to, uh, find a, a sacred practice, um, whatever that may mean to you, like that could be, um, doing something really relaxing, like a bath, or maybe this is, um, like a spiritual or religious practice that feels sacred to you. Um, maybe what feels sacred is like your relationships with family or pets, um, whatever that is just kind of like embodying that a lot more in, in 2023 and that kind of, um, becoming an additional strength of yours, um, whatever those things are. Okay. We have, um, some specific, more specific relationship cards. So let's, um, get into that next. All right. So we have, um, the subconscious mind and it says recondition your subconscious mind to change your life. Subliminals rewrite belief systems. 
okay? We have total connection, like-minded, resonance and intimacy, compatible personality types, healthy attachment styles. And then lastly, talking again, texting, reconnecting with someone, open up a dialogue, second chance, back in each other's world. Okay, so the cards that we have underneath these are all in reverse. So this first card, Subconscious Mind, is really talking about um, really specifically what it's saying, like reconditioning your subconscious. Like in 2023, you are reevaluating your beliefs about yourself, your beliefs about relationships, um, your beliefs about these things in particular. Like what do you believe about connection? What do you believe about intimacy? What do you believe about compatibility? What do you believe about healthy attachments? And not just your beliefs, but educating yourself um, through trusted sources like, you know, therapists and psychiatrists and, um, you know, people you trust who have gone through therapy or done the work, like, and then you coming up with your own, um, your own understanding of these things that are more healthy for you. Um, learning about, you know, how you want to connect with people, how you want to deal with arguments and disagreements, um, when you feel like you want to forgive people versus when you think it's not healthy to let someone back in your life when they've done, you know, X, Y, and Z, like what do you kind of find acceptable as like a, a line in the sand, like where you need to personally draw that line, um, things like that, like that, these are a lot of the things that you're going to get to, um, address in 2023, a lot of getting to learn about yourself and that bleeding into how you deal with emotions and people. And, um, yeah, just making relationships a lot healthier for yourself through a lot of, um, self dialogue, a lot of better, um, self understanding, um, yeah, so let's see. This year, um, a big or like one of the main chakras that you're going to be working on is the root chakra. Um, this card is the abundance card. Um, hopefully, yep, yep, you can still see that. Um, yeah, and so this is like um, the like physical parts of your life, like that sense of safety. Um, so for a lot of you guys, you may have not, or like to like, um, sense of like trust within relationships. Like, um, those are the things that you'll be healing. And then in turn, um, if you believe in chakras, like you'll be working on that healing, that chakra, um, this year and being able to bring about more abundance because, um, when you kind of are able to establish those things a little bit better, um, it may help you to bring in healthier connections, um, when you feel like you're ready to do that. Okay. So we have, uh, three cards here. Um, so we have naked before the stars. Um, sacrifice. And obsession. And I'm going to pull these, um, pull these or not pull these, but, um, leave these here because we have uh, one more card that we'll pull once we talk about these ones. So let's talk about this, this card, um, first, the sacrifice card, because this card is talking about you guys recognizing that whatever decision you have to make, that it's going to, um, is going to result in a loss. Like it's going to be a loss in some way for you, even if I think what's most important to, to note about this loss is that you guys recognize that this is a temporary loss because in the end, in the future, there's a gain from leaving something. So maybe there's a relationship where you know, like, you know, it's not fulfilling. It's draining me. 
and I'm going to feel the loss of choosing to leave or I'm going to feel the loss of this person leaving. But I know that in letting this relationship dissolve and letting this relationship end, that I'm giving myself the opportunity to heal and to learn and to do whatever it is that you need to do post this situation so that somewhere in the future you can meet and make connections with friends, um, other other lovers or other significant others, whoever that may be, other people, other family members, whatever the situation, you recognize that you're, you have to make the sacrifice and that in this sacrifice, um, you're going to be able to reap re- rewards in the future. So this is just kind of acknowledging like you're giving up something in turn to benefit, um, benefit yourself down the line. And so this card here, um, Naked Before the Stars. I like this card being in you guys' reading because it talks about for whichever um, of you in pile two relate to not feeling a certain thing in a relationship. So, for example, say you don't feel beautiful in this relationship, right? Like this card talks about learning to have that experience outside of this relationship um, through whatever work you um, end up doing in 2023 and really getting a chance to embody that feeling of being beautiful. And, you know, um, if we're using this example of like being overweight, like instead of, you know, maybe you hear the word chubby, instead of it making you feel like unattractive and not beautiful when you hear that word, um, you'll be like, yeah, it's like, I'm chubby. Like, yes, I look good. Like I got the thickness, like, you know, whatever that may be. And you can, you know, glean that for whatever other examples you can think of. But this is really just talking about like whatever, um, whatever insecurities you may have, um, that kind of show up in this connection, um, really getting to a place in 2023 where you embody that thing and you find beauty, in it, um, and you find it, um, to be attractive to you and that being most important, um, in 2023, like you finding that thing attractive. And then with the card obsession here, this obsession card really wants, um, wants to be an anchor for you guys in 2023. Like this card is for any time that you may find yourself fixating on one, one thing within this relationship that you're not finding healthy for you anymore. So maybe for example, like, um, this is a, this is an example, say that this is an abusive relationship, right? And the person that you're partnered with, um, sees a puppy and it's really hot outside and they give this puppy something to drink like two years ago and it's today and you're like, you know, they're really not that bad because two years ago they gave this puppy some water to drink when it was really hot outside, but they really treat you like S H I T. Like they're, they don't consider your feelings. They make you feel like you walk on eggshells, like all this stuff, but somehow you're able to fixate on this one time that they did something and it leaves you blind to everything else. And even like in this card, this card talks about like an experience of like fixating on this like one thing and it kind of leaving you in a slumber. And so you kind of like, like if you can imagine like, like in movie scenes where like they are in the garage, right? And they leave the exhaust on and they're kind of just like falling asleep, but like they don't feel any pain in the passing. This is kind of talking about a similar experience of like being so fixated on something that like we stay in a situation that's killing us, but we don't even feel it. It's like a, I'm falling asleep at the wheel type of situation where we really need to be more aware and conscious of the whole situation and not just that one thing that leaves us with rose colored glasses. So this is saying like, if in 2023, you ever feel yourself backsliding, like, look at the whole picture. Yes, they may have done that one nice thing or those two nice things or took you out to this nice dinner or didn't forget your anniversary that one year. 
but what's the big picture? Like, how are you feeling in general? How is this affecting you in general? How does this person treat you in general? How is this relationship for you in general? Like, this is what this card wants to bring to your light. Don't get obsessed over the one good thing. Is this relationship healthy or not in general? Okay. And this card was in reverse. I don't know how it got unreversed, but I do remember when I pulled this one, it was reversed. So let me get the um, book for this one. We'll read it straight out of the book and that will, that's what we'll leave you with today, pile two. So that is 26, 34. Sometimes I'm like, should I have? Okay, here we go. Essential meanings, joy and contentment, a sense of fulfillment, a feeling that all is well. And mind you, it is in reverse, so those things do not exist in the situation. So there is not joy and contentment in the situation. There is not a sense of fulfillment, and there is not a feeling that all is well. The protection message says, lighten up because this is a time to be ridiculous and silly. See the world through the eyes of a clown and don't take yourself or any situation right now too seriously. Have fun, be, play be playful and make laughter the order of the day. You'll be surprised by how everything just seems to fall into place when humor leads the way. Being happy and lighthearted is a wonderful icebreaker. Life is meant for play as well as work. For laughter as well as tears, for celebration as well as focus, spirit wants to sparkle through you today. Smile and enjoy each breath and enjoy each moment. Miracles lie in the silly things today. And I just want to make sure there's... Um, just make sure there's not anything I'm missing to mention. That's all. Yeah. So um, that's all that we have for you, Pile 2. Thank you so much for being here today, guys. I hope that you found this message confirming of what you've been experiencing and um, confirmation of some of the things that you maybe have considered doing to move forward through this challenge. Uh, I hope that you found some practical um, tips, tricks, skills that you can use also moving forward. And if you feel like sharing how this reading related or what you think 2023 will be like for you this year, please feel free to do so in the comments. I would love to read it. Um, but again, this is all we have. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next reading. Bye, guys. See you later, Pile 2. Hi, Pile 3. Welcome to today's reading. We're going to be talking about 2023 in detail. Um, we already have some cards picked out for you guys, some tarot, some oracle um, so yeah, so without talking you guys' ear off, <laughs> um, let's get into it. So we have the Fool in, in the upright position, Knight of Swords, and the Ten of Cups in reverse. We also have Curious, Natural, Creative. Actually, I'm going to put this one. I'm so weird. Okay. All right. Creative. Okay. Because I feel like these two were talking about something. And then these two were talking about something. Okay. All right. And then um, we'll get to the other cards. But I don't want to overwhelm you guys. So we'll just. Leave it in the top back right there really quickly. So, all right. So the first thing I do want to mention is that um, the layout of these cards. So right here, like, feels like we're talking about the, like, past, like, ways or kind of like the past and the present and ways in which you um, approach certain things. And then we're talking about here um, where that's kind of emotionally left you feeling. And then here is just some advice um, and also some information about what 2023 will look like for you, given um, what this will kind of discuss. I feel like it would help to have just a little bit more information before starting. So I actually want to pull some more of the Oracle cards. So um, we have the nurturing card here. 
And for the relationship card, we have karmic partner. This person is a karmic partner. There is a very strong pull and intensity that draws you in. They are a catalyst for your spiritual growth. Be aware of the triggers and patterns coming up for you to clear. This is a stepping stool to prepare you for true, authentic love. And then we also have here envy. I am the same as everybody, but with different challenges. And worry. I am learning that worry doesn't change an outcome. The last relationship related card you guys have is seeing things differently than they are. Past conditioning, influence, and situation, reevaluate. So with the Ten of Cups, in the upright position, we see like a happy, joyous family. Um, it's really an energy of emotional fulfillment. And so in the reverse, there's some sense that um, we're not getting to experience emotional fulfillment in an area of our life that we're really desiring that. And there's also like a call to stop kind of take a breather and like have the ability to kind of like appreciate those in our lives that um that we do love um and also being able to enjoy some of um some of the shared moments that we have with these people but the knight of swords kind of speaks about why you may be having a difficult time with um achieving the ton of cups situation within your own life like this knight of swords is really saying that you know you as a person you have um a lot of passion, a lot of confidence when it comes to the things that you do. Um, you're a very like intelligent person, but what may be making it difficult for you to, um, like you may be having thoughts like, wow, like I am really good at, uh, like the things that I'm passionate about. I'm really good at, um, work. Like for some reason, like you may find, um, ease of success in those areas, but not so much ease of success in, um, relationships, um, or um, situations where you need to be vulnerable. Um, so, you know, you may f you may feel like, what am I doing wrong? Because I am passionate and I, I do feel committed and, and I feel like I know what to do or I know what to say or those sorts of things. But the Knight of Swords kind of calls to say like, hey, we may be lacking a little bit of compassion or um, we may be a bit cold or... Uh, maybe a bit overconfident. Maybe we need to um, reevaluate what we think is true in certain situations or in certain relationships. And also that we may be a little bit afraid of being vulnerable um, or we just may not feel like we're prepared for what it is that we're experiencing in a given situation. So I think for some of my pile threes, um, what may be a challenge is that you may have grown up in a household where you feel like certain behaviors mean something in particular. Um, but, you know, maybe when you're dealing with a certain friend or a certain romantic partner or even another family member, um, their um, perspective on a certain behavior may be different. Um, so I think that maybe for some of you guys, like intellectualizing um, solely intellectualizing someone's behavior may be making it challenging to um, kind of click in the way that you're wanting to. So um, it may help to just like sit down with um, with these people and just have them tell you what their intentions are. And sometimes those are really weird conversations. And I think um, part of the challenge that you guys may be facing is, well, if I sit down and talk to this person and just ask them outright, how do I know if they're lying? So it's like that, that part of your brain that's saying, um, okay, let me intellectualize this. Let me um, think about it, which is totally fine. But the um, Knight of Swords is kind of also coming in to say like, use, try and use some of like that gut feeling, try and use some of your intuition, or at least I'm um, trying to practice using it in 2023. That way um, you can, get a sense a little bit better on um, the tells for when you feel like a person is being honest with you about their intentions um, for certain behaviors or certain things that they say. So, you know, with anything, I think 
that, especially with like, when it comes to that gut feeling, sometimes it takes trial and error of being like, okay, I thought this and that was wrong, but I thought this, this time, and that was actually right. And, you know, with each kind of like try and go, you get a little bit better at being able to, um, trust your gut a little bit more. So, yeah, so I I feel like that is kind of a little bit what, what this is kind of talking about here, um, with the full card action creativity. Um, this is talking about being able to love up on yourself, like be compassionate with yourself, but doing it through things that um, are really enjoyable to you. So if that feels like a foot bath or um, making yourself like a latte at home, I love making caramel lattes at home, but now I'm like trying to cut back on the sugar and I'm like, no, I really miss my caramel lattes, but the regular latte is good too. But like whatever that is that you enjoy, like maybe you enjoy tea or milkshakes or, um, hot chocolate, whatever it is that you guys like. Um, if you like going outside to walk the dog or maybe you take your kitty for walks <laughs> or if you don't have a pet and you feel like you'd like a pet for company, um, just whatever in 2023 that feels like is um, taking care of you. But also for some of you guys here, because we have the creative card, this may mean that you want to get into some of the hobbies that you really like. Um, and there was an essence here too, of just like flexibility and being able to choose what it is that you want to do. So, you know, being flexible, being creative, which basically just means do whatever. Like if you come across something and you're like, Hey, I want to try this, go ahead. And, and if you're not sure, you know, sometimes I feel like I catch myself, um, catch myself up a little bit because I used to feel like I needed to know if I was going to enjoy something before actually doing it and that would kind of um, hinder me a little bit. So if you feel like you end up in that energy, sometimes it is helpful to just try it because you won't know until you try it. Um, So maybe in 2023, trying to really lean into taking action more than um, more than thinking about it, if that makes sense. So like, yes, the the portion of ourselves that needs to intellectualize it is just as important But if we feel like it's stopping us from getting to do things that feel warm and cozy and relaxing and comforting and compassionate, maybe just take the action anyway. And we'll think about how it makes us feel afterwards instead of trying to think about, do we think it'll make us feel good before? I hope that makes sense. So we'll leave the thing until after and do the action first when it comes to self-care in 2023. So yeah, so... Um, we do have a card, the nurturing card. I did want to read that one, um, out loud for you guys, as well as the two other last Oracle card, like message cards for you guys. Um, but we have here envy. I am the same as everybody, but with different challenges and worry. I am learning that worry doesn't change an outcome. So these may just be messages that you guys, um, you know, may benefit to hear individually, Um, so I'll just leave those there for those of you who feel like you benefit from it. And then I'm going to use the book to read this Oracle here, nurturing. Okay. So that's the earth star chakra. It says you have called upon this card today as an invitation to create more nurturing in your life. Weren't we just talking about that? It is easy to get caught up with the crazy hustle and bustle of the world, forgetting to take a little time for yourself to give back. Nurture and receive the gifts and fruits of your labor. Wow. Okay. All right. Cause <laughs> all right, I'm glad that we get confirmation. Okay. The healing energy of nurturing is available to you now and you're being encouraged to take a moment to honor yourself with this light. Something in your life is calling for more love and nurturing. You are completely deserving of this love and attention. Do these things for yourself and allow you to feel this loving essence. Take a long, relaxing bath, go for a massage, spend time with friends and loved ones, whatever allows you to feel nurtured. Make sure you do this for yourself as it is a big part of your growth and healing at present. So definitely 2023, this is like a huge focus for you. It is a natural state of being to nurture. However, due to fear, we have learned to shut off and separate ourselves from the love and nurturing that surrounds us. Open yourself to the kindness in your heart and create some love in your life today. Affirmation. 
I am nurturing myself in all aspects of life and I am open to receiving this powerful, loving energy now and always. I love that. I always love when we can get confirmation within the reading. Um, all right, so let's get you guys a last message. So this card, I'm kind of leaving like halfway. Like I, I feel like for some of you guys, the reverse message will be what you're needing. And for some of you guys, the upright message. So we will read both of these and then we will finish with this one. Okay, so this one is a leg up. Let's see, we'll put it here. And then to the C, we have the book right here. Sorry if that's super loud. Okay. There's the cord. Okay, perfect. So the essential meaning is receiving help, delegating authority, interdependence. So already, you know, part of this message is really talking about like, you know, being open for receiving support from other people, being able to not only support others, but also to allow them to support you. Delegating authority makes me just think of like, you know, sometimes I need assistance. So say for example, if you like live with your partner and you guys um, come home and you're like, hey, babe, like I'm really tired. Do you mind cooking? And I'll just wash the dishes, that sort of thing. Like you're allowing someone to help you that way you can achieve whatever it is you're trying to get done. Or like maybe you had a really long project and your partner notices like you're really tired and they're like, Hey babe, don't even worry about it. Like I'm going to cook dinner tonight. I'll throw the dishes in the dishwasher and you just worry about your studies and like being open to receiving that kind of assistance um, in 2023 to kind of lessen some of the the burden for you guys. So you've come to a point where going it alone is no longer optimal for you. Life is a way of presenting you with the perfect people to align with who can give you a leg up during this next phase of your journey, 2023. <laughs> it didn't say it in the book, but it's 2023. <laughs> this is your year. Help comes to you in all areas of your life where you need a boost. The trick is to accept that aid so freely given. When you embrace interdependence, allowing teamwork and independence to co-mingle, miracles happen. Now is such a time. The relationship reading says relationships that are healthy thrive on interdependence. It's important to recognize that you need others as much as they need you. You must allow people to support you just as you are there for them. This is the time to be vulnerable, to speak up about your needs, and to ask for them to be fulfilled. Trust you will be met with kindness and love. Don't expect others to read your mind, though. Ask when it is given. And I definitely want to say, like, as I was looking at, like, the karmic partner card, like, it, it didn't give me a feeling of, like, a negative relationship, like... I think this is more just like something that you're learning within a relationship and like you you know if this if if you're watching this video and you have a romantic relationship in mind or even just like a friendship or you know whatever kind of relationship it is like it definitely gives a sense of like I am just like the book is saying like I'm learning to be vulnerable I'm learning to let people support me I'm learning how to let people be there for you um yeah, and, and two, just I do want to point out even harder, like they said, ask and it is given. Like, 2023 is going to be a year where you're really trying to learn how to ask for assistance because that can be hard, too, um, really hard. So um, if if this is a reading that at any point you felt like related to career, money, or business, um, now is the perfect time to seek advice from a mentor or a business advisor who has been where you want to go to help you get there too. If you do, you will receive very good counsel that will aid in your prosperity. It may also be the case that your endeavors have grown and you are in a position where you just can't do it all yourself anymore. Time to bring on those who can give you a leg up. Trust that help is available and it will indeed appear. Delegate authority to others so you can take steps towards your big dream. The perfect people will arrive at the perfect time so long as you step forward with just a mustard seed of faith. All right. And then for those of us, which I feel like is many of us in this group, um, 
the protection message. I feel like this is equally as important as everything else this card has talked about. Are you always insisting on doing everything yourself? Are you Pio 3? Are you insisting? <laughs> Do you have little faith that help will come, convinced that the burden of the world is doomed to remain on your shoulders? Your beliefs about going it alone need to be discarded as they do not serve you at all. Let others help you. Yes, it will make you feel vulnerable to admit you need a helping hand, but to be vulnerable is good for you to have a lesson to learn. Or sorry, for you have a lesson to learn. You must let someone else assist. You can't do life all by yourself. Once you shift your expectations, you'll be amazed by how quickly help arrives to give you a leg up. And I think for some, if you have people in your life who make you feel like you should be going at it alone, you know, this reading could be coming in to say like, hey, we, we might need to reevaluate this relationship um, in some way. That's up for you to decide. But you know, the Knight of Swords, the, it's a leg up, like it's all talking about needing to allow yourself to be more vulnerable, um, needing to allow yourself to, to get help. And so we have this last card here for you guys, and then we'll wrap up. Um, the essential meaning of this card is being in flow, returning to source, recognizing how pieces fit together and natural pattern of events. Isn't it wonderful when you feel yourself in the flow of life, when events and conditions seem to engage you in a way that is fluid and effortless? This card reminds you that going with the flow is exactly what you need to do right now. Definitely. Ride the wave of opportunity formed by perfect conditions. Allow trust and faith to guide you forward as you flow like a river into the sea of life. Like if you feel like you can use that kind of energy when you are engaging in new activities, new hobbies, with new friends, with new stuff, like kind of, um, you know, it doesn't have to be completely like always spontaneous. Like for example, um, sometimes I'll plan events like a month or two months ahead. And on the day of the event, once it comes up, I'll do some spontaneous stuff. So for example, um, just recently I went to this R and B in Seoul um, candlelight event at, uh, at an aquarium. It was so freaking cool. It was so nice. And because I had planned it ahead, I had a little bit more money to kind of like work with that night. And it ended up actually being super cheap to get dinner out. We went somewhere, um, that was really nice, tried some new food. It didn't cost us a lot of money. Um, we just had a good time. So it felt like both spontaneous, but also like there was an essence of planning because I booked the tickets like a month or two months in advance. So that sort of thing, if that's what you would prefer. Um, but yeah, just whatever amount of flow you feel like works for you. Okay. It says this card reminds you that going with the flow is exactly what you need to do right now. Ride the wave of opportunity formed by perfect conditions. Allow trust and faith to guide you forward as you flow like a river into the sea of life. Relationship reading. There are points in a relationship where you have to decide to go with the flow rather than dictate the course you share with another. Can you let go of the need to have things your way and allow the relationship itself, your combined goals and desires to steer the ship? Can you both transcend your personalities and allow the partnership to form its own identity, its own energy? Now is the time to relax and see where this mutual journey leads. And for anyone who feels like this reading relates to them in regards to money and career, everything seems to work out when you stop scrambling and allow the sea of opportunities to wash over you and wake you up to your most prosperous potential. To get into that flow, you need to address your beliefs that abundance, you need to address your beliefs about abundance and money. The true meaning of your personal currency lies in your skills, your talents, and abilities, and most important, your core beliefs. Everything flows from your inner world and is reflected in the outer one. When Grateful to serve, you align your prosperity consciousness with a higher consciousness. You can expect miracles. Everything you need will come to you easily. So that is all I have for you guys today, Pile 3. 
I know it was a little rough in the beginning, <laughs> but I appreciate you guys sticking, uh, sticking with me. Um, and I hope that you found this reading confirming of what you've been experiencing or what you've been thinking of as something that will um, help in whatever challenge you may be facing moving forward. Um, I hope that you also came away with some practical tools and tips that you can use um, in the future or now to help you as well. And as always, I appreciate you guys being here. I hope that you enjoyed um, <laughs> some of the stories that I like to kind of sprinkle in there. And until then, I will see you in the next reading pile three. Bye, guys. Hi, Pile 4. Welcome to your reading today. So we're going to be talking about 2023 in detail, what 2023 may look like for you, the challenges you may be facing, um, some advice that you may find helpful. Um, and, you know, we like to sprinkle in some personal stories in there that way you guys feel like you can relate. You're not the only one going through what it is you're going through. Um, so, yeah, so let's get into today's reading. So, as usual, we have some tarot, some oracle cards. Um, we also have some self-forgiveness cards because I felt like as I was doing cards for you guys, like there's definitely a strong sense of like personal power in the year of 2023 for you. Um, really like loving yourself in the sense of like figuring out who you feel like you are as a person, what that is, um, and really kind of staying true to that. Um, but also acknowledging that, you know, right now you guys may be going through it and, um, 2023 is the year that you're kind of sludging through a lot of this stuff. Um, so while you may be reaping a lot of the rewards of your hard work for loving on yourself in 2023, like I still see you guys, um, needing a hug, right? Like probably right now needing a hug, um, so yeah, so let's get, I want to get these Oracle cards. Okay guys, so pile four, I feel like you guys are definitely dealing with something heavy, something that may be um, related to like a mental health challenge or um, maybe there's something that has been bringing up a lot of anxiety for you. Maybe you've been experiencing nightmares or flashbacks or um, whatever it is, is I definitely get the sense that 2022 in some sense, or at least a part of 22, part of 2022 has been really heavy for you. Um, and you've just been mentally kind of dealing with a lot of shit, um, is the simplest way I can say it. Um, but even saying it like that doesn't give the true essence of how difficult, of a time I feel like you guys are going through like this feels like breaking down crying several times in a day type of like heavy shit if that makes sense like I'm feeling like I'm going through some shit by myself type of difficulty but five of pentacles comes in to say all right you're dealing with some stuff right now and it's really heavy and it's really hard but we want you to not be doing this shit by yourself like is who, who is there in your life that you feel like can help you out in some sense? And I say in some sense for a reason, um, like even if it's just something as small as like they're in the room with you, like, and you guys know, like if this is you right now, like, you know, some of those situations where it's like, I just need someone in the room with me. Like, I just need someone to sit next to me. I just need someone to be there with me watching TV. So I'm not doing some shit by myself. So I don't feel so effing alone. Like this is the energy of like, please in 2023, whoever, you know, if this is like your personal energy, the energy of like the people who love you in this reading, wh whoever, whatever, it doesn't even matter in 2023. There is a ask for you to ask for help, to ask for support in any way that you need it. Even if this means like finding um, support groups or um, getting out of your comfort zone to ask friends and family members that you trust, emphasis on you trust, 
um, because it can be very detrimental to reach out and ask for help from people you don't trust because they can abuse that trust. And so we want to make sure that we're asking help of people that we trust. Um, yeah, like this just feels really, um, really, really important, a really pivotal year for you. And I think that was part of the reason why, um, personal power, being in your power feels really strong for 2023 because there's a sense that in, in being able to find out or feel out who it is that you trust, you almost in 2023 garner a better sense of self because you almost feel like you can be safer. Like it's, it's almost like you feel safer to be yourself because you know that you have people that you can trust. I don't know a better way to word that, but that's kind of what it feels like. Like in a, I guess like an example would be, and here's a card here talking about community. Um, but in the sense of like, if someone was to find their community, like their group of people, they got a stronger sense of self in the process, like in, in some way or another, they felt like their personality was more ingrained because they, they have a community, a support system. I, I don't know a better way to word it, but I hope that you kind of get the essence of what I'm trying to say there. Um, but yeah, with the voice and the soften card, like this is definitely just saying like, I feel like it's recognizing again, like you're, you're having a hard time. Um, maybe you still having a hard time right now. And it's really asking like, as scary as this may be, um, is there someone that we can ask for some help? Like if you don't have family, is there, um, a group, um, that you can go to, you know, it's like a support group that you can go to or, um, a support group that you can call into like sometimes there are um and if you don't want to go in person like you can call someone is this meaning that like we're going to therapy um if we have access to that um or seeking out psychiatry if we think that we may have a mental health dis- diagnosis that we were not just struggling at home with symptoms um when we really need some support some assistance whatever this may be for you guys um, with the witch card, I feel like this is just for those of you guys who feel like it'll be helpful to feel connected to something either within or outside of yourself. So for some of you guys within this may feel like, um, getting a larger connection to self, like, um, expressing your personality more, um, exploring some of the ways in which you like to dress, exploring ways in which you like to do your hair, I'm exploring like maybe you like to use makeup or you like to do your nails or you like you're a sneaker head or you really like certain types of boots and you want to collect those or you, um, you know, this could even be like hobbies. Like you like to collect shells or you like to go bird watching. Like this just gives me a sense of like finding things that make you feel like yourself. Um, but if it's external, like maybe for some of you, this is discovering a religion that you feel like aligns with your values and morals, or maybe this is disconnecting from a religion that you feel like no longer aligns with those things. It, it could be a bunch of different stuff. Um, this could be practices that you feel like are, or are not spiritual, but make you kind of feel connected to yourself. Um, like burning candles does not have to be spiritual. It smells really freaking good. It's cozy as hell. And that may make you feel more connected to yourself as an example. So I feel like that's what that card is kind of um, talking about. But um, we do have some of the self-forgiveness oracle cards here. And I want to read these for you guys. There's four here. So the first one says, I forgive myself for thinking that I need an apology to validate the way I feel before I am allowed to move forward. I choose to believe that although my perspective is not shared by all, the way I feel is legitimate and it is safe to trust myself and move on without proof. I think it says it as as clearly as can be said. Um, But there's definitely... Um, for you guys, pal, for like a need to make sure that the people who are in your circle 
validate you. Like that they, you know, when you come to them and you say, Hey, like, I'm really not feeling good. Like I, I think I may have depression that they don't just say, Oh, like, come on, you need to push, push through or, um, don't, don't be so sensitive. Like you getting to a point where you're like, no, like, this is how I feel. That's valid. And I'm going to check in on this. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to ask for support and just really kind of get into a point where you forgive yourself for any instances where you felt like, um, you allowed someone else to, to verbally kind of like give pushback that, that stopped you from, from doing what you felt you needed to do. Second one here, I forgive myself for not listening to the guidance of my inner knowing. I feel like that's exactly what we were just talking about. I choose to believe that I am remarkably intuitive and that life guides me and communicates with me through my intuition. Yes, yes, yes. And even here we had under the deck intuition. We had under the deck intuition. So you can trust, um, you can trust and, and tribe here as well. Oh, wow. The tribe here with the green and the intuition here with the purple. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it ain't so. It's so, it's so. I'm going to leave that there because it look real nice. <laughs> but yeah, trust your gut. Like, you know what's best for you. Um, You know you better than anybody else, period. And that that's just what it is. Um, and in 2023, you realize it more than ever. Um, okay. We have, I forgive myself for staying in places I no longer belong due to fear of what may happen. Should I admit I want more? I choose to believe that I am constantly expanding into my infinite potential and change is an inevitable side effect that allows me to flow into spaces more suitable to me. So just like we were talking about, like for those people who they are not being supportive, like this may be you saying like, I'm no longer staying in a place that is not for me. I'm not staying here. It's not healthy for me to be here. You're not supportive. You're not helping me. You're holding me back. I'm leaving. And the last one says, I forgive myself for believing that in order to be successful, I must sacrifice rest. I choose to believe that when I take time to pause and welcome a renewed perspective, life makes time for me. So yeah, definitely like putting yourself first, putting um, self-care as something that's important, but not just self-care and like what we may normally think self-care just in like, if I want to participate in a hobby, I'm going to participate in a hobby. If I feel like sleeping all afternoon because my body is exhausted, I'm going to sleep all after, like whatever that looks like for you. Um, the no place like card home we have, these are the um, final messages. Um, no place like home. That card always reminds me like you are your home, like you are home and people who can accept you for who you are are also home. Like that's kind of the essence of what that gives me. Um, and I want to read this, this one here. So we'll read, um, we'll read both actually, just in case there's anything that you, um, want to pick up on your own. So let's see. So we'll do, um, no place like home first. Okay. So authenticity coming home to self, feeling at home, arriving at a place where you just fit, being comfortable in your own skin. So this is what you can look forward to in 2023. Home feels safe and secure. It's a comfortable place to rest and create. A place that is known and you can call yours. This card signals... This card signals your ability to trust in yourself and feel at home in your own skin. And that it's beginning to solidify as you claim your dignity and integrity. Aspects of yourself no one can take away from you. You know who you are. You hold your head high, yet with neither pride nor humility... Instead, you stand as the observer, seeing through the eyes of your soul. This puts you in a position of power and strength. Authenticity is your home. You are safe here in the house of your spirit and and spirit. <laughs> okay. All right. And then we'll do the relationship meaning too. Lovers, friends, and companion animals are at home in your life right now. 
You are in sync and full of love and you can be secure in the knowledge that it is reciprocated. Relationships elicit a sense of emotional safety, comfort, and the best aspects of familiarity now. Be home in this relationship. Together you add to the love of the world. I love that. And then lastly, the why. 31. Oh, perfect. Motives. Driving intention. Motives driving intention. The power of knowing the why. There is great power in understanding your motives right now. The oracle asks you to be very clear about why you're asking this question, looking for this answer, behaving in this way, and most important, making this choice. Knowing your why is the key to fulfillment. When you are clear about it, your intention will then be a magnet for miracles. Motives define the nature of your experience. When you think about something, feel it, and then act on it. This invisible why is the life force energy within the seed, which brings it to life and holds the potential for growth. So what I want to say with that card um, as a final message is, what what do you value? Uh, what, are, what are your values? What are your morals? What are... Um, your needs and wants and really getting clear on those things in 2023 and being able to use them as a guidepost for what relationships are a good fit, what relationships are not a good fit, um, what things you want to take up, what things you want to stop doing, what things you want to change a bit and so on and so forth. Um, there is a activity that I really like love <laughs> suggesting I actually suggested it in a, another pile for this same reading. So if you just check the description box, then you will see um, a link to a values, um, a values activity. You'll basically, um, it's like a two page sheet that you, you don't need to print it out or anything. Um, but it has a list of a bunch of values that has definitions of each value and you rate the importance of this value and it's unique to you. You know, one person may rate it as very important while another person will rate, this is not important to me at all. And neither of those answers are incorrect. That's just what's true for you in this present moment. But knowing what your values are can really help you to decide um, what actions are important for you in a given moment, especially when you're having a hard time deciding what you want to do, um, especially if you're presented with two really good options or two really bad options. Sometimes you knowing where your values lie can help you make that decision. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in doing something like that, that link will be in the description. Um, and you can do that. Um, so yeah, this is all that I have for you guys, Pal4. I really appreciate you letting me take the time to um, share what came up for you guys. I hope that you found this confirming of what you may be experiencing and things that you may have been considering doing to face challenges and move forward. I do hope that you found practical tools, tips, or skills that you can use in this reading in the future and the present. Um, and as always, I appreciate you guys being here. And I will see you in the next reading. Bye, Pile 4. Disclaimer. There is mention of mental health challenges, diagnoses, and various related and sensitive topics. I hope this reading allows you to feel seen and understood. Hi, Pile 5. Welcome to your reading today. So today's message is going to be about 2023. Um, some of the challenges that you may face this year. Some of the things that you can expect. Um, some words of advice that um, may be helpful to you that you may find assist you in working through some of the challenge that we may talk about um, but also like some of the things to look forward to this year like the surprises of 2023 the good parts of 2023 to look forward to so um, we have a bunch of cards <laughs> um, that I've already gone through and shuffled for you guys just in being able to save some time for today's reading. So um, we will just jump right in and see what you guys have today. Okay, so uh, let's see here. So we have um, a lot of like relationship related cards. So I will say that for pile five, like you guys' reading is definitely heavily focused on relationships. I'm not quite sure if that's just like strictly con confined to like romantic relationships, but 
Um, we will see as we go ahead. Okay, Pop Five. So for this year, you guys, um, I want to say that in 2022 um, or early within the you know year of 2023, you guys are working on releasing a relationship. So um, if you are in a relationship that you feel like is super healthy and you see, you know, that relationship continuing on, this is probably not the reading for you. Um, if you are in a relationship where you kind of already know, like the situation is not healthy for me, or, um, I just don't see myself here much longer. Um, this is kind of talking about that. So we have release attachments here talking about connect connections that no longer serve you release in the past so that new relationships can come in. Um, and that also too, like there being a sense of um, conflict within a relationship that's causing some emotional upset, some tension, um, and just kind of putting you in a, an emotional space that feels um, unpleasant instead of a relationship that puts you in an emotional space of, you know, feeling uplifted and encouraged and supported. So um, due to this, <clears throat> It's talking about at some point in 2023, getting to a point where you leave the space that you're in, you work on some of the things that you feel like you'd like to address before moving into a new connection, and then getting to a point within 2023 um, where you start to rewrite. Um, rewrite the story of what you want relationships to look like for you. Um, you kind of get back out there again in 2023, you start to date again, um, having addressed some issues around abandonment. So fear of abandonment issues that were affecting your relationship. Um, or for some, this could be experiences um, that they've had that have been negative in relationships that kind of bring in an, an essence of mistrust. So maybe, um, you know, there were... Um, backstabbing or like betraying or ghosting or just something that um, made it difficult for you to kind of trust people a little bit um, or you know behaviors that other people had that added to a sense of abandonment so in 2023 you're really kind of digging into this um, being really brave about it and and figuring out what are the areas that I'm wanting to address before I kind of jump back into the dating pool um, for some of you guys this may be deciding that you don't want to date after leaving this relationship in 2023, either or obviously totally fine. Um, you guys know yourself best and what you would find most healing in this situation. Um, but there's definitely, um, for those of you who feel like getting into a new relationship, um, finding it has here, new love dating, um, rewriting your story like there is still this um, essence here of like the possibility of finding something new finding something um, that's a little bit easier a little bit more uplifting and supportive for you guys so let's see um, what other cards we have for you guys okay so we have here gilded regret we have peace in reverse and we'll read this one i um, probably actually read both of these out of the book because I usually like their um, specific meaning. Um, warrior. We have the world in reverse. And we also have the strength card in reverse. Okay. So this Gilder Regret is really addressing um, some of the difficulty that may be arising within yourself that has made leaving a certain connection difficult. Um, so for some of you guys, um, there may be a lot of um, however or what if or but um, kind of like internal speech like within yourself. So for example, like... Um, but he could be a really good dad, but sometimes he's really nice to me. Um, if his, if his boss was nicer to him, he wouldn't come back home so angry. Um, uh, if she got a promotion, they wouldn't, you know, be so, be so mean to me all the time. Um, they used to be really nice. They used to be really loving, um, those sorts of things. And it's kind of 
made it difficult because in staying in the what ifs and the maybes in the past, it's made it so that you've been able to stay sort of like in this bubble of memory or this bubble of, um, this bubble of not fantasy, but like a, a memory that you can, um, construct on your own, if that makes sense. So it, it's kind of, um, it makes it more difficult to step outside of the situation because there's something that you feel like you can tangibly hold on to as a hope for something that you really want. And it's made it really difficult to leave, although a large part of you recognizes that there is a large, large sense of lack of peace, of harmony, of whatever it is that is supposed to be healthy and nurturing in a relationship for you is just not there. Um, And so these cards are kind of addressing that absence. So this peace card here, um, in its upright position, it would mean along the lines of freedom from attachment and radical acceptance. Radical acceptance usually being something like, okay, I recognize that this situation is really shitty, but I'm accepting the fact that this situation is shitty. Like I'm not um, trying to sugarcoat the situation or pretend that it is not what it is that I see, that I can physically see, objectively see. I am acknowledging what I know to be true about the situation. Um, That's kind of what I think of radical acceptance as. Um, But this card is in reverse for you guys. So it is saying that, you know, there is some attachment issues here. Um, And two, we have um, abandonment. And, And an issue with abandonment can make it difficult to detach because there is that fear of like, well, if I leave, what if I don't get another, another opportunity for a relationship? What if no one else comes and loves me? Even knowing that in a particular situation, we may not particularly feel loved. We may not particularly feel, you know, understood or looked after or supported or taken care of. Um, or, you know, whatever that thing is for you, like there's still this sense of like both recognizing that something is lacking, but also I'm afraid of leaving even this space of lack. So in reverse, the message for this one straight out of the book is now is a time for calmness and well-being in spite of temporary conditions. Even if there are dissonant notes in the music of your life, all that means is that you must go within and fine tune the extraordinary instrument that you are. Find harmony within yourself and don't look to the outer world to provide certainty. This too shall pass and once again your life will be filled will be filled with beautiful music. And I'll also read the relationship meaning just because I feel like Knowing that this card is in reverse, um, it can give a sense of, you know, if the relationship meaning says X, Y, and Z, and it's in reverse, that means like X, Y, and Z is not present. So when two people are in tune, sorry, when two people are in true alignment with one another, they have an innate harmony between them. They are as two perfect tuned in instruments playing together. Sometimes it's impossible to tell who is who. Peace is yours and it is to be savored. And that's definitely something I feel like in 2023, you guys are saying like, I'm reclaiming my peace because like, I feel like a lot of you guys probably cannot function as well as you're needing to because your peace is being so drained, um, so drained from the situation, from this relationship, from this person, um, And you're really, really, really needing to get back, get that back, get that back so you can be yourself again. Uh, Having the strength card here for you guys, like it's definitely illuminating the fact that leaving the situation or allowing yourself to stay gone from the situation. Like, for example, like say the other person is the one who ends the relationship, like there would be difficulty in allowing that person has stayed gone even when they try to come back. So there's like this sense here with that strength card that there is 
difficulty here in trying to address the, the aspects of yourself that have made a relationship like this feel as if it's conducive for what you're looking for. Probably not the best, <laughs> best way to word that, but um, whatever it is that you feel internally. And so the world card here in reverse is just kind of like reiterating like this end of the cycle for you like yes it's very difficult but like a, a lot of these cards talk about the ending like this relationship is ending in 2023 and although this peace card is in reverse we also have the world card in reverse so there's something to be looked forward to like in leaving a place where we can't have peace, we get to a place where we can have it, especially when we do the internal work to figure out what was making it so difficult for me to attain the peace that I was looking for. So let's talk a little bit about that, right? Um, about some of those internal things um, in addition to what we already spoke of. So we have a, a, a few um oracle cards that we pulled quite a bit but um they'll build in each other so hiding your true self we have here um underlined with the addicted card so i'll put that here as best i can we have the child i was meant to be underlying the envious gluttony card and then masquerade underlying the peaceful among thorns card all right so we're going to take our time um to figure out you know and try and go as deep as we can to to see what are some of the underlying um underlying things going on for you that way you have um as much information as possible moving forward um there's three different themes here. They may not all apply to you, um, but take from whichever ones do apply to you. And then afterwards, we have some Oracle cards um, that will be ways to approach some of the healing that you uh, may want to partake in or um, just some of the things that can help to like comfort and, and soothe you along the way as you kind of undertake some of this work. Okay, so for these, this first pile here, the hiding your true self and addicted, I feel like this pile is for those of you who um, fall into the experience of, I think for some, feeling like you've had to walk on eggshells in this relationship. And because of that feeling, I think a lot of you have had to kind of like dim your own light in a sense, like... You couldn't truly be yourself, so maybe you wanted to wear certain clothes or do your hair a certain way, but you didn't feel like you could because you'd kind of get backlash for those things. That's an example. Um, for some of us here, um, by hiding your true self, um, this kind of took a toll on you and needing to kind of cope with that. Um, there may be some activities that you partake partook in that you used to try and cope, but you felt like negatively impact you one way or another. This could be anything from food to like recreational drugs or something else. Um, but there is a sense here that like you guys felt like you had to hide yourself from not just the person that you were in a relationship with, but from the world in general. Like it, this was not an experience where you felt like you needed to hide yourself from this person and then when you left their company, you felt free again. No, like this was an experience where this dampered who you were as a person and that um, that damper kind of stayed 24-7. Um, and it may have been like really light in the beginning and as time passed, it like progressively got more and more permanent of a damper to the point in where you kind of just felt like a doled out version of yourself. That's what I feel like this card is talking about. And for a lot of us, when we get to that doled out version of ourselves, we start to try and find ways to feel again. And I think, again, that's kind of where this comes in. So, you know, some of us will eat to try and feel again. Some of us will, um, I don't know, smoke weed, you know, whatever that thing is. Um, 
like these things don't have to be bad but I think in the sense of like what we're talking about here trying to feel again I'm trying to think of like um, activities or things that people may do to feel again Um, for some of us um, this could be self-harm for example Um, and I mentioned that in the wanting to be, um, as open in conversation as possible when we do these readings, that way you guys can feel as seen as possible. Um, obviously that won't apply to everyone, but I just want to say that like, I can pick up the energy of like, you guys just not being able to be yourself. Okay. So for this pile here. This is for my group of people where, um, for one reason or another, um, as you were growing up or as you were a kid, you felt like there was something that you just didn't get that you needed. Um, this could be a lot of different things. That's why I kind of want to leave that statement as general as possible. Um, but whatever that thing was, it, for... Um, most of you guys in this pile resulted in a similar experience of kind of feeling like there is a a hole. I'll use a metaphor as best as possible. Imagine we grow up lacking something that we really felt we needed to help nurture and um, to be an experience of love and affection. And we grow up without it. And so there's this empty hole here. And because we didn't get this experience that taught us that you can be loved, you can be appreciated, you can be seen, heard, understood, um, we grow up thinking that we need to punish ourselves instead. And we don't consciously think of the things that we're doing as punishing ourselves. Um, So maybe we um, engage in behaviors, sexual behaviors with people that um, make us feel shitty Um, Or we um, hang out or date people who make us feel shitty about ourselves. Or um, we do things to purposefully harm ourselves, to make ourselves feel shitty. And it it kind of tying back to um, something that we we, we didn't get. We didn't get, maybe we, we didn't feel seen and heard by our parents. Or we didn't feel like we had a friend group when we were growing up. Um, part of 2023 is is really for you guys figuring out, you know, what is that thing that I feel like I didn't get and finding out how how can I get this now? You know, whether you're a teenager or a young adult or um, older adult, uh, middle age, like whatever time this may be, like 2023 kind of ushers in to say, what what do we feel like we didn't get that we really freaking needed And how am I going to give that to myself now? And so before, you know, we talked about some of you guys in this group deciding to date again. For some of you, that may be the reason why you decide to date even after a relationship that has been so difficult for you. Because what you're needing may be along the lines of um, something that you need from a partner, right? In a romantic relationship or something that you need from a friend, in a platonic relationship, um, whatever that case may be, it may involve another person. For many of you, this will involve another person. Um, but for some of us, this may just involve ourselves. But in 2023, you're really trying to figure out what, what was that thing that, that I just didn't get that I was needing so that you can find out how to give it to yourself or who you need to hook up with to get that from them. Um, That way you can really fill in this, this hole that you may feel you, you have um, from an experience you just didn't get growing up. All right. So the last one we have here is masquerade and then peaceful among thorns. These two cards really talk about um, firstly recognizing that um, things come into our lives and things go. Um, But the peaceful among thorns really kind of talks about Um, wanting to not um, put everything into terms of spirituality and really wanting to recognize that a lot of what we do, we do in the physical sense and that in doing that, you know, something physical, the spiritual um, idea of it can give it, can give it depth of meaning. So 
you know, in leaving in deciding to leave a relationship because you know it's not healthy for you, you recognize that you physically had to take an action to leave a relationship. And in leaving that relationship, you can choose or 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 not choose to give a meaning to a bigger meaning to what took place to in a way, dress it up however you would like to, to suit your own needs. Um, But either way, there's kind of a sense here as well, like um, to be mindful of how you dress something up, because if you dress it up in a way where you remain in a situation that's unhealthy for you, you can become basically peaceful among thorns, like sitting, sitting bareback in a rose bush pretending like it's not pricking you and causing you to bleed and have wounds that become infected, blase, blase. So really just saying like for this, for this pile here, um, what am I like physically needing to do? Like, do I need to physically step back? Do I feel like I need to physically jump into doing something? And then if you feel like it's helpful for you to, um, give a deeper meaning to, you know, an action that you want to take, that's fine. If you feel like that's something you don't need, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, so that is what I am gathering. (laughs) I don't know why I did my hands like that. Um, kind of I'm getting from those three piles. So um, I'm definitely curious if you feel comfortable, like leaving in the comment section, which of these you felt like applied to you. Um, if you feel like sharing, if, if that's something that would be helpful and not harmful, um, obviously if you don't feel like sharing, please, please, please. Um, I know I don't have to say it to you guys, but (laughs) never feel pressed. Um, okay. So we have natural humor and cozy. And so these cards really are just an idea of, um, how you may find some respite, um, some healing energy, some, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not reprieve, but maybe comfort, maybe comfort, um, in, in this difficult time in the time where you're really making some hard decisions, um, getting out in nature or doing things that kind of bring nature to you. So this could be like buying house plants. This could be going for a walk outside. Um, this could just be like enjoying the weather. Like if you, um, don't particularly enjoy cold weather, but you kind of go outside to kind of get, get your vagus nerve activated and kind of calm you down a bit, relieve some of that anxiety. Maybe you like cold showers, that sort of thing. Maybe you like candles or incense, um, hanging out with pets or getting a pet, whatever those things kind of are in 2022 to, um, kind of help you out a bit. Um, humor, like watching funny stuff, laughing with people, laughing with yourself, reading books, audiobooks, podcasts, um, Spotify music, um, anything just to like get you laughing this year, anything to, um, help uplift your mood, especially in times when it can be, um, a little bit difficult to kind of do that on your own. I'm also just like along the lines of this, but support if you can, um, develop or maintain or lean into the support groups that you may already have and really just communicate like the need that you have with them um setting up some type of like um not ritual but like a a a practice of checking in um may help some of you guys um and then with cozy i think that's really just along the line some some of what we talked about with natural but um, kicking your feet up on the couch, like listening to music, um, making a nice coffee for yourself or going out and getting a nice coffee, um, those sorts of things. Um, and anything else that you kind of think of along those lines. So to wrap up the rest of this reading, um, I did just wanted to, uh, you know, check in as we were doing this reading, like what chakra is most being most impacted this year for you guys. Um, And so for you guys this year, it is a lot of healing for the root chakra. Um, You can, if you feel like, Google what that is. 
Um, that way, if you feel like that's something you care to talk about, because I know that's not for everyone. So I just kind of wanted to throw that in there for those of you who do care about that stuff towards the end. Um, and then I will leave you with a final message. Um, and then we will wrap up from there. All right. So I just have to, I know I just had the book. Okay, here it is. I see it. Off the mark. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> you have called upon this card today as an invitation to create more nurturing in your life. It is easy to get caught up with the crazy hustle and bustle of the world, forgetting to take a little time for yourself to give back, nurture, and receive the gifts and fruits of your labor. The healing energy of nurturing is available to you now, and you are being encouraged to take a moment to honor yourself with this light. Something in your life is calling for more love, for some more love and nurturing. Just what we were talking about, right? Um, like you, you and yourself, like the essence of yourself is calling for more love and nurturing. You are completely deserving of this love and attention. Do these, do these things for yourself that allow you to feel this loving essence. Take a long, relaxing bath, go for a massage, spend time with friends and loved ones. Whatever allows you to feel nurtured, make sure you do this for yourself as it is a big part of your growth and healing at present. It is a natural state of being to nurture. However, due to fear, we have learned to shut off and separate ourselves from the love and nurturing that surrounds us. Open yourself to the kindness in your heart and create some love in your life today. Affirmation, I am nurturing myself in all aspects of life and I am open to receive this powerful, loving energy now and always. So that is the last much as I have for you guys. I wanted to lastly say I'm glad that we closed off today with this message because I think the word that I was like struggling to find is nurturing. Like in some aspect, you guys grew up feeling like you weren't nurtured in one way or another or in a specific area that you really needed. And, um, this, this year is really just about like nurturing yourself, learning how to be nurtured, just like the reading said, um, and just doing a lot of these activities, massage, relaxing bath, hanging out with friends and loved ones. Like you guys deserve that. And I, I really look forward to seeing the progress that you make. If you ever feel like later you want to check in, like in the comment section on this video or, if you randomly remember this reading like months down the line and you end up seeing another reading, always feel free to check in. I love to hear um, how you guys are doing, the progress that you make, um, knowing that it's, it's really not easy. A lot of what you guys um, end up deciding to tackle and, and confronting. And if you hear, that is my cat sneezing. <laughs> But um, yeah, thank you so much, Paul Five, for being here today. Thank you for allowing me to be the one to share these messages with you. So <laughs> without talking your ear off, I will let you guys go and I will see you in the next reading. Bye, Pile Five. Hi, Pile Six. Welcome to your reading today. So we're going to be talking about 2023, what that, what this year will look like for you, some things you can expect, um, some things that may help you along the way, um, and whatever else kind of comes up um, through the reading. So I've already pulled some cards for you guys um, that you can see here. Um, and we'll just work with these. If we feel like pulling more to clarify, that's what we'll do. Um, but if not, um, let's get started. So the first card we have here is Empathy. We have um, two Oracle cards. It's clarifying. We're going to leave those there for now. Um, we have Forgiveness. Um, for tarot cards, we have the justice card. Sorry, I just dropped something. And the fool card. All right, so let's start with these for now. Okay, you guys. So in 2023, I'm getting a sense that um, some sometime in the past, it doesn't have to be 2022. It could be before 2022. Um, I think that you guys had like a very like free spirited, um, very like. Um, act first, apologize second sort of attitude, um, not in like a negative way, but just more so like, I think you were so free spirited that things kind of like, um, happen quite fast. Um, and you're just kind of like enjoying life, doing things, saying things, blase, blase. And I think that there may have been something that you did that kind of like backfired in a way at some point in 2022. And I think in 2023, 
you're um, kind of experiencing some of that um, back blow, I guess. Um, but it provides an opportunity for you to kind of clarify um, what your values are, what your morals are. I think that um, when this took place, you probably were quite young. I'm going to make the assumption um, for a lot of you um, or just in a stage of life um, where you hadn't yet maybe considered how actions could be seen or taken or how people can glean intention from certain things you do or say. And so um, something you did may have been received negatively, although that may have not been um, what you hoped to achieve. Um, or maybe um, there was something that you did that was hurtful and, you know, time has passed and you kind of like recognize like the error um, of your ways as like a saying um, as something that you, you wouldn't necessarily want to do in the future, like a behavior that you wouldn't want to repeat. Um, so this is kind of talking about that and, um, being able to kind of, I think there's this process that you're going to go through in 2023 where you're seeing your side of the situation, um, kind of, you know, really recognizing that, um, there's a, a lot to kind of contemplate of what has taken place. Um, a lot of recognizing that, um, you know, this may have not been purposeful, um, although it may have been hurtful or um, received wrong, or it may have um, resulted in negative consequences for you in one way or another. Um, you know, an example of this could be like saying or doing something that you didn't mean any harm by, but you lose your job because of it, that sort of thing. So um, just kind of seeing both sides, like, and you know, maybe on the opposite side of the token, you um, kind of understand um, why a job may have had to let you go if, you know, something that was on social media got out and it would have, you know, been viewed negatively by the job as an example. So it's just really like this, um, seeing one side of another. I think part of 2023, um, is really asking you to kind of be kind to yourself because, um, especially I think we, I, I, you know, I can't speak for every country, every, culture, every society, every, you know, microculture, that's impossible. But I think, um, my experience of the culture that I grew up in or that I'm a part of, um, I feel like there's not a lot of allowance for people to make mistakes. And so I think that that may be a part of the experience that you're having, um, where people aren't allowing you to learn from your mistakes and instead they're kind of like holding you to this one thing that you did or this one thing that you said. Um, and so it may be making it really difficult for you to forgive yourself in a sense, not necessarily that you need forgiveness, but it may be making it difficult for you to kind of like move, move on from whatever the situation was. Um, you know, for example, say, you're in high school and you sent like a provocative picture, we'll say provocative, um, not in like a judgment way, <laughs> just like most people, um, maybe who saw the picture would judge it as provocative. Um, so you sent it to someone at school and, um, you got a lot of judgment and hate for that, but you don't graduate that school for another three years or two years and you can't like relocate, um, and you know, wh whatever circumstances, like it's kind of like you, you remain in, in this space. And so it, it makes it really hard for you to kind of like move forward because everyone else around you is still harping on this one thing. So I think that is a part of um, why this forgiveness card is here kind of talking about the difficulty and, and being able to move forward from this. Um, but I want to say, <laughs> at least from like the energy of this reading, like obviously from one thing that someone says or one thing that someone does, we cannot glean the full character of a person. And I think that just really needs to be said for you guys as reading, like people may want to label you as one thing or another. Um, that's for you to decide for yourself, right? Like, um, if you sent, you know, we'll use the example of the picture. If you sent that picture and now people want to call you, a whore or a slut or, you know, whatever term they want to use, that's up for you to be like, um, well, it's a picture. 
it's a picture and it's just a picture like you know what I mean like that type of energy like you're deciding for yourself like is this even something that I even needs forgiving like just because you're judging me for it doesn't mean it's necessarily bad type of energy that's what I'm kind of getting like you're deciding for yourself what is what um so yeah so let us um get to the oracle card so we have never ending story um that really still reminds me of that feeling of like people continuing oh I dropped my water bottle people continuing to like harp on the same thing it's like bro this was two three four five ten years ago like let that shit go like I'm over it and I'm the person who did it like you need to keep it pushing that type of it's like like maybe some of you are annoyed by this and I don't blame you because especially when if you're in a place where like people are not tolerant of growth of change like they make it seem like people can't make mistakes and do better it's like it's annoying because you know internally the process that you have gone through to to say you know what no that didn't align with my morals and values like that was a behavior outside of what I deem as right or wrong right because that's so unique to each of us like our morals and values are so unique to each person that when we do something we can use those morals and values as a gauge to say hey is that a behavior I'd want to do again and so I think this you know um, experience really gave you an opportunity to one check in and say like have I ever evaluated my morals and values but number two like did this behavior align with with those morals and values all right so 37 I'm just like flicking through all right so <clears throat> it says um the essential meanings are self-criticism the wounded ego unnecessary dramas and we're gonna go to the reverse message since it is reversed all right, it says, this is a time to avoid drama at all costs, especially when it comes to other people's stuff. Your sensitivity is an overload these days, and you're best served by keeping your distance. Your mantra today is, not my circus, not my monkeys. All this drama will pass, and you will carry on unscathed and blameless. So, you know, this message could definitely be there for you guys to remind you that Although this drama may be occurring, it may have taken place in 2022, it may have bled into the beginning of 2023, but at some point in time in 2023, it will die down. Um, we will finally get the opportunity for, you know, however long this may have lasted, 2023 is really ushering a period of this dying down, this becoming less less of news, this becoming less of the gossip, um, to really just give you a break from from everything. All right, we have to be fair. And the to be fair card um, always reminds me like balance, like not, I want to say balancing the scales, but just in a sense of like um, the time that was needed to allow you the space to, to do what you needed to do after this took place has kind of like unfolded in a sense. So like to be fair, like, this is no longer going to be an issue for you. I don't, that's, that's what comes to mind. <laughs> but um, let me just read it from the book for you. 38, 38, 39. Okay, here we go. So it says balance, justice, a need to consider options, mutual benefit, the law of cause and effect. Life offers experiences that are challenging and experiences that are nourish that are nourishing Yet over time, they strike a balance. You move from bringing, you move, from, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, guys. And then I just hit the mic. Let me read this over because I'm like struggling to get my words out. Okay. Life offers experiences that are challenging and experiences that are nourishing. Yet over time, they strike a balance. You move from being from stasis to doing, from discovering to loving, to letting go, to being again. Life is a pendulum swinging between all of these states. You will always oscillate back and forth between doing and being. 
If you are not content with where you are at this moment, remember that all experiences have their place. Accept them without judgment and you will see how the universe adjusts in perfect balance. You reap what you sow. For every cause, there is an effect. Wondrous things will be revealed now. So I think, again, like this is just like a re-reminder that things are kind of closing up with the situation. Um, and, and yeah, <laughs> that's really just the main part. So um, I want to get some information about um, ways or um, advice on like how to deal, right? Like how to cope, how to move through this challenge. Um, just any, any advice about that. So we have a wake here and I feel like the wake card is talking about really, um, what it was a, a word that came up in another pile. Um, yeah, a uh, radical acceptance. So this a wake card makes me think of radical acceptance. Like, seeing objectively what has taken place and like objectively deciding next steps. So if I see that, um, something that I did resulted in, um, resulted in X, Y, and Z, well, I know that this is where I currently am within this situation and I can decide what choices or decisions I want to make afterwards. So it's, it's really just like, um, being very, um, practical, about situations and outcomes, um, in a sense. Um, so yeah, let's see, um, what practical advice for coping? Um, I think trusting yourself, um, like definitely recognizing that you are, you're not a bad person for what, you know, whatever took place. Like people may try to label you as such, but that doesn't mean it's true. And pleasure. Um, I think uh, with the pleasure card here, really trying to find things that feel good for you. This could mean so many things. This could be reading a book. This could be watching TV. This could be hanging out with friends. This could be um, something that comes to mind that um, may only resonate with a few of you, but maybe finding a new friend group when where you feel like you fit in better, um, they're not as judgmental, they don't bring up the old shit as much, that type of energy. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera. Um, that sort of stuff. Um, I feel like I want to get one more card, um, and then we'll close with that. And a lot of cards came out. I just want one. Okay, seek. So yeah, so seek. I think that's just confirmation of actually what we were just talking about. Um, like, yes, the advice is um, do stuff that are pleasurable, but there's going to be uh, effort that you have to put in to actually do that, if that makes sense. Like, it's not, it may not necessarily come to you. Like, for example, if you're going to find pleasure in reading a book, that book may not just fall on your lap. Like you may have to go out to the bookstore. Like you may have to go on Amazon and research new books, go to goodreads.com. See if they have new books that way you can come across material that will be pleasurable to read that kind of, um, energy. So this is what I'm seeing for 2023. I know that, you know, um, there may have not necessarily been a lot of cards, but um, it does definitely seem like, you know, this has taken up a large portion of um, your life within however amount of time this has been a, an occurrence, an issue, a challenge for you. And so in 2023, it really is resolving. I hope that you found this reading to be confirming of what you were dealing with, confirming of some of the things that you may have been considering to deal with this challenge. Also hope that you found some practical tools, tips, or skills that um, you may find useful in moving forward. Um, so again, thank you so much, Pile 6, for being here. And I look forward to seeing you in the next reading. Bye, guys.